Hi fellow reefers, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video is on the effects of high phosphates and nitrates on your corals and fish. I went ahead and I did a little research and I looked up some certain things that you might know and you might not. So I'm going to talk about it and I'm actually going to show you uh, uh, different corals and how it affects certain types of corals and how it affects fish. So let's take a deep dive and check it out. Hold on. Okay, so here we are in front of the tank. And before we start, for the purpose of this video, and I'll put it right on top of the video, uh, when it comes to phosphates, I'm going to use, and nitrates, I'm going to use the uh, short um, identification of it. Like for instance, phosphates um, is known as PO4. And then nitrates is known as NO3. I thought I mentioned that uh, because then when I uh, start and talk about this uh, topic, uh, I'm not going to say phosphates and nitrates. I'm going to say, uh, well, in some instances, I'll say phosphate, but then I'll switch to PO4 or NO3. So before I start, you actually know what they mean. Okay, so here we go. Uh, nitrates and phosphates go hand in hand when trying to control nuisance algae. In other words, if, if the nitrates, but more so the phosphate, it will cause, um, and you see the observation of actual, of actual hair algae. Now, phosphate is often the eliminating nutrient for algae growth. And excessive levels of phosphate can be fueling the growth of algae, uh, which is mainly what I was uh, talking about when I started this intro. So that's an indicator as we go along of uh, phosphates. If you see you're getting mostly hair algae, uh, that's an indication, to, an indication that you have high nutrients uh, import and then your export is not equivalent uh, to the uh, import. So accumulation of it, it'll actually cause algae. Now, too much phosphates can also inhibit calcification in corals. While no phosphate or nitrates at all can starve corals. This I mentioned before on different uh, videos. It's the new school of thought. Before, the old school of thought where I come from uh, is that uh, you had to have a pristine, shall we call it, sterile tank. No um, nitrates, no phosphates, no ammonia, on and on and on. Uh, but then now... Uh, marine biologists and studies that they have done when it comes specifically to SPS, to be honest with you, they have found out that if you have that type of environment of pristine, shall we call it, sterile water, uh, corals actually starve because not only do they need uh, the additives that you put, although most of the corals are photosynthetic and they get most of their energy and so on by the lights, but you always should really feed your corals. But not only that, they did find out this new school of thought that if uh, you have no nitrates and no phosphates, the corals will actually starve because they, they actually need that. Not in high levels, but in a manageable uh, levels. Now, normal levels of both, which is what I'm going to get into now, of and O3 and PO4 is debatable, meaning although the normal level of NO3 for some may be between, I would say, 0.05 and 0.07 ppms, others may swear on 0.02 or less. When it comes to PO4, they say levels below 0.02 is ideal, yet any value above 0.02 and below 0.10 to others is great. And that is totally true. Uh, upon research, the first thing to consider is, and I have it here in capital letters, do not chase numbers. And I'll repeat it again. Do not chase numbers. Just because right there I mentioned that your um, NO3 should be between 5 and 7, 
It doesn't mean that you have to do everything, water changes and all that to keep it. It, it, uh, it depends on your reef. Each, each reef aquarium behaves different. So what might be an ideal setting for a person, uh, another um, coral reef tank, uh, that, that, might not, that might not hold true. Uh, you might have a little higher levels of it, and yet the reef will do fantastic. That's where that reef, that uh, reef tank wants to be at. And then you cannot chase numbers because then once you do that, you are going to run into major problems when it comes to the reef. So once you see if your, your rocks look, look good, your life rocks look good, your corals look good, your fish are doing great, that's the number that that specific reef tank uh, likes it. it. It has set. So that's what you should use as, let's say, your baseline. Now, one thing that I did learn on this little research that I did is the older, more mature reefs will tolerate higher amounts of PO4 and NO3. So as to say, a younger less than or up to one year with higher levels of PO4 or NO3 would produce algae yet same amount of PO4 or PO3 levels and a more mature reef, say two years and up, would not. In, in other words, a mature reef has more tolerance, and that is true. Uh, I'll give you, uh, for instance, um, if you go to YouTube and you, and you check out um, Reef Builders, uh, a tank that he uh, went ahead and he went to, he went to the owner's house, uh, Louis um, Rojas, I, I think is his name, it's, it's SPS dominated, and the tank is beautiful. But yet, when he talks about his uh, parameters, his uh, PO4 is at, at 0.4, at 0.40. Now, in his nitrates, he said they were about, I, I think it was like 20 or 30. Now, that, for that tank, if you were to go into that video and you, and you check, again, his name is Luis Rojas, but you, you'll find it under uh, Reef Builders, uh, Jake Adams. If you were to have those same levels, on a less mature tank, let's say less than a year, trust me, your tank won't look like that. It'll be full of algae and you'll have an, a, a nuisance algae issue. So that's totally true. Uh, the older your tank is, the more mature your tank is, what happens is there's more, uh, uh, should I say, uh, biological load, there, there, there's more bacteria that keeps growing and growing on your rocks, on the water, the wall, sand, etc., etc. So because of that, uh, you know, the good bacteria is able to tolerate actually higher levels of PO4 or NO3. Now, I've noticed, now, now this is my observation, that I've noticed in the past few weeks my reef has settled at PO4 between 12 and 15 ppms and on NO3 between 10 and 12. Now the effects of high PO4 and NO3 to your corals is noticed uh, mainly on your SPS corals, especially acros, in which they will tend to bleach a bit and change in colors. Yet, in a mixed reef, all other corals like LPS and softies behave normal, especially Ganyoporos and Alveoporos, in which they thrive in high nutrient level reef tanks. What I use to lower uh, PO4 and NO3 is simply water changes and the use of protein skimming with great results. If I see that the um, uh, PO4 goes very, very high, then of course, then I would have to use certain products. But I'm trying to lower my PO4 and NO3 simply by doing the water changes uh, by actually uh, keeping my protein skimmer at a longer uh, time period. Like for instance, uh, when I didn't have any uh, PO4 or NO3s, I went ahead and I kept feeding uh, Neophos by Brightwell Aquatics. Well, uh, uh, and I kept checking and checking my phosphates and nitrates. And it started to go up, but it would, the corals would consume it. The animals there would consume it. So then what did I do? I went ahead and I turned off the, uh, I turned off the protein skimmer. 
then I started uh, to notice an increase on PO4 and NO3, and it started to go up and up. But then when it started to keep going up, and I was feeding daily, then I started to feed every other day. Then once I did that, I did notice that it was starting to level off a little bit. So what did I do? I instead of uh, putting the, let's say, the protein skimmer on a timer five or six hours, I left that on 24-7. And if not, then I would do a, a water change. Another thing that you can do to lower your PO4 and NO3, of course, being considered that it's a, a nutrient import, is lower your feeding regimen. So like in my case, I was feeding daily uh, my fish. Now I feed them uh, every other day. And when it comes to coral feeding, the same thing, I feed less. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to specific corals and fish, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that and how it actually affects or doesn't affect the animals. Okay, now one thing that I would mention in general is that when it comes to high uh, phosphates and nitrates, in this instance on a mixed reef, actually uh, fish aren't affected. I mean, if it's not that, that high. And when it comes to uh, LPS and soft corals, actually nothing. They don't, uh, uh, you know, they, they won't show any signs of uh, stress, but yet, and then I'm going to show you as I'm focusing on the on one of the corals. Uh, when it comes to SPS corals, and like I mentioned, specifically acros, uh, you will see a uh, situation, they'll start to bleach out either the tips and actually they'll uh, die. And here's an, uh, an example of one of the corals that I have up here, uh, Stylopora. It was a beautiful coral. Uh, the uh, feelers were very, very out there and yet, as you notice, it has bleached out and bleached out quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, show you a video on the site, and you'll get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is a side shot. And if you notice, uh, right here, it's a, these uh, have actually practically bleached out, and it looks like if I'm actually going to lose that coral. This is a result of high PO4s more than actually uh, high NO3s. Now here we have a different scenario. This uh, Hollywood Stunner, this is a SPS. Like the previous coral that I just showed you, it's also an SPS. Now this one, if you notice, uh, there is no bleaching out, but yet when I was talking about that they'll change colors, uh, here, I mean, this camera, is, like I've said before, it's a high-end camera. I really don't have to use any type of filters, just adjustments for uh, underwater photography on this camera. But the coral in the middle has actually turned a little, little brownish. It has changed a little bit of color on it. So this is also a negative effect when it comes to higher levels of phosphates and nitrates. Now here, this is a positive effect when it comes to high phosphates and nitrates. This candy cane, uh, I, I mean for a week or two weeks I've noticed, man, it's shrunk and shrunk and it's not doing too well. And I didn't know what else to do with it. And yet, now that my, uh, my PO4, as a matter of fact, went up, I just checked it and it was at 0.34, it's a bit high. But yet my NO3 was, I'd say, between 12 and 15. But if I was to show you, like, let's say, a previous shot of this uh, candy cane, and now, my God, when I woke up today and I looked at it, it has exploded, it has expanded. It's actually beneficial for this specific coral to actually have a high PO4 and a uh, little more than average NO3. So this is a, a perfect example of a positive effect when it comes to a high range of PO4s. Yet this acro that I got on the famous uh, 13th anniversary sale at Worldwide Coral is doing fine. I'm praying that nothing happens because, as I mentioned, uh, SPS, specifically acros, will show 
uh, reaction to high PO4s. It's specifically high PO4s, not as much as NO3, but it's uh, doing fine so far. And then finally, the uh, flower anemone or rock anemone, it's kind of like, it doesn't look that happy. It's a little contracted. Again, it might be another issue, but it could be the PO4, uh, which I have it a little bit high. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And just a little recap, uh, every reef tank is different. So like I mentioned on this little research and explanation that I did with PO4 and NO3, is what might be suitable for a tank, uh, not necessarily does it mean that it's going to work on yours. Now, the one that I'm talking about, Luis Rojas, you'll find it on the Reef Builders, on uh, Jake Adams. Uh, he's had the, the tank for quite a while. So the tank is fully, it's a beautiful uh, reef. I invite all of you to check it out. It's all SPS, Acro Dominated. It's mixed because you also have some LPS, but yet he's got his PO4 at 0.4. In other words, 0 0.40. Tank's doing great. He's got the protein 24-7, protein scammer on 24-7, and his nitrates, I think he says it's around 30 or something. So now, again, like uh, to reiterate again, if it was a new tank, a young tank, like less than a year, and you had that, trust me, the tank will be full of uh, nuisance algae. You know, so it, each uh, reef behaves different. I'm noticing, as you just saw with me, uh, that at... Uh, PO4 of 0.34, which I had just checked it about, what, an hour ago? Uh, the corals are doing fine. I mean, yes, I'll be honest with you. Before I shoot these videos, I clean the, the glass and I, and I blow the uh, rocks with a turkey basin. But the glass didn't have that much algae. Uh, as you f if you follow me, you'll notice that now I, I ended up not only one uh, conch snail, but the other one might have been in hibernation. It came out. And the sand is fine. And then now, as I was shooting, a candy cane that was barely close, now at a PO4 of 0.34, look at it now. And then the LPS is like the alveopora, the gonopora, which I don't have yet. And all the other, all the other corals are, are doing fine. So you just have to, uh, have to keep a, an eye on it. And like they say and other reefers say, know your, your reef, know the behavior. And again, don't chase numbers. Uh, when the reef wants to settle at a certain number, leave it. Don't start doing the back and forth because then you are going to run into issues. So ending the video, I hope you liked it. I hope you found it fun and educational. If you did, hit the like button, the thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. And right next to it, there's that little bell. That's the notification bell. So that'll tell you uh, every time I upload a video, you'll be the first ones to know that I actually did so. And as I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thank you for watching this video. Keep safe. And until next time, bye-bye.